My name is Anel Annandale and I'm an educational psychologist. So this video forms part of the child psych range of videos in which we focus on early learning and ways you can support your child at home to make sure that they are as ready as possible for when formal learning starts. Today I want to talk to you about reading instruction and specifically about the mistakes that I find that parents make when they teach their children to read. So I absolutely love the idea of already starting reading instruction at home. It's not necessarily something you have to wait for until your child starts formal schooling in grade R or grade 1. But there are a very specific set of things to keep in mind because reading instruction has to happen in the correct way so as not to confuse children. So today I want to highlight six of the biggest mistakes that I find that parents make. And the very first mistake is that Parents will often teach their children the letter names instead of the letter sounds. And it's something we do so automatically because when you become a proficient reader, like many of us will be at our age, you are so used to looking at the alphabet and automatically in your head you hear A, B, C, D, E all the way to Z. But keep in mind that your child is not familiar with those letters and what they look like. And so, in order for your child to make sense of those letters, he has to be able to connect it to what he hears. And so, we don't want to teach A, B, C, D, E, but instead we want to teach A, B, K, D, E, E, and so on. And a very easy example of why this is important is, for instance, if I had to spell the word cat, C, A, T, a very young child will hear siat. Whereas if I spell cat k at, it's very easy to hear then that that word is cat. The second mistake that I find that parents make is that they teach the letters in the sequence that they appear in the alphabet. So A all the way through to Z. But we don't want to do that because so many of the letters that appear close to each other in proximity look very similar and also sound very similar. And some of the ones, for instance, if you just think about it quickly, B and D, M and N, P and Q are very much almost next to each other or very close in proximity. And you'll see how those letters looking and sounding the same could be confusing to a child. So we want to teach those letters in the order, I think, in which they are visually the most dissimilar. So look for sounds that don't look the same, don't sound the same, so your child can really consolidate that letter before moving on to the next one. There is a recommended sequence in which letters should be taught, and I've put this them in the sequence on this piece of paper for you. So I'm hoping that you can see it. If you can't see, don't worry, we'll take a picture and post it at the end of the video. But basically, we start, start with S, A, T, I, and then go from there until we've taught all 26 letters. Mistake number three is that very many times parents introduce the letters as capitals instead of the small letters. To a large extent, this isn't really our fault always. It's got to do with the resource available to us. Most of the toys and the educational material that you will buy from shops usually come in the capital letters. And the reason for that is that they're manufactured internationally, most of them. Now, there's some very big differences in reading instruction theory in different countries. Countries like China and America, where many of our toys come from, introduce the capital letters first. And the reason for that, if I show you this set, for instance, is that the capital letters look very dissimilar. Visually, you can see the difference and remember the difference quite well. But the reason other countries, like South Africa, teach the small letters first, and personally I think it makes more sense, is that these letters, 90% of the text that your child will come across, if it's in a brochure or a magazine or a story, 90% of the text will be small letters. And so even if your child only knows the small letters, they'll be able usually to read a text without really being very familiar with the capital letters. Okay, so we introduce the small letters first, and then we move from there to the capital letters. 
And it's very difficult, like I said, to find toys that come in the small letters. Really nice brand to look out for is Melissa and Doug. They usually provide sets in both capitals or small letters. Right. Then a fourth mistake is to try and introduce reading before your child really is ready. To a large extent, it is a developmental process. Very young children, like two and three year olds, just haven't quite got the abstract thinking ability and can't sit still for long enough to actually deal with formal reading instruction. But from the age of about four or five, you can start introducing your child to letters and to different sounds. And it's just very important before you even start that with your very young children. We want to first make sure that they have a very solid sound foundation in pre-literacy skills. And so there's not enough time in this video to go deeply into what pre-literacy skills are. There is another video available on this website where we've really gone into detail on that for you. But basically pre-literacy skills come down to whether your child knows very many of the concepts like shapes left and right, that kind of thing, whether they have good and well-developed visual uh, perceptual skills and auditory perceptual skills. So again, just a few examples of why that's important. For your child to be able to hear the difference between ba and da, they need very well-developed developed auditory discrimination skills. In order for your child to perhaps see a half-printed letter and know what that letter is, they need very well developed visual closure skills. So have a look out for that video on the pre-literacy skills and make sure that that's all really, your child can do all of those, those things before you start introducing the letters. Then we find the fifth mistake is that parents will very often introduce the incorrect text. Now again, we work with so many different texts that we often don't even realize that things are printed in different formats. But the text that we would use at the office or at home, the Times New Roman or Ariel or Comic Sans, in most of those texts, especially the letter A, there's some other letters as well, but consistently the A is usually printed like these two. And the reason we don't want to teach your child that this is what an A looks like is that if we teach this form of the letter, you'll see that there's already two concepts that your child can use, old concepts that he might know that can help him anchor a new idea. So that just helps your child to learn more easily. And so you'll see if we introduce it in this concept, we actually start with the shapes. And children very early on will be taught that A, is a circle with a little line to the right of it. So you'll see those two concepts of shape and then laterality, left and right. And if you are looking for a very nice text to use, you can usually download the grade one VBA text. And again, I'm not sure that you can see it here, but I've printed it for you, I'll put on a picture. This is what we want the letters to look like when you introduce them to your child. Right, and the very last thing, the mistake that I found that parents make as well, is to try and only keep it to pen and paper. And very young children find worksheets and sitting at a table extremely boring. So remember to mix it up and make it as multi-sensory and interesting as possible. So, you know, let them do it in Play-Doh or in the mud or, you know, use those crayons that you can draw in the bath with or have them cut letters out on sandpaper, things with different textures, to help them really use all of their senses in experiencing what the different letters look and feel like. Okay, so that concludes our video on the six biggest mistakes parents make when they teach their children to read. Keep those in mind when you start your formal instruction and keep a look out for the other videos in this series on how best to support your child in the early